get in here, get in here, what get up, in here. What How up? you doing, Tab? I found we are so excited that you decided to worship with us mm -hmm. on today. I'm Reverend Z. I'm Stu. And we're excited that you're here. And there's so much that this month is bringing into yes. us. This is the beginning of the month, the first Sunday. So we have communion on today. But we also are celebrating our youth, our youth and children mm -hmm. in this month. And we have some activities that are going to be blessing to them this month. So keep tuned for everything we have coming to you in your way. Yes. And, you know, before we get started with worship, last week we talked about, you playlists. know, playlists. So yes. we were talking about playlists and, and you dropped a song. I didn't even Sit know. Sit at the house board. I, I didn't even know it was a song. Hey, yeah. Like I thought she was song. like trolling us. Like, no, it's sitting a real in the house. <laughs> it's a real song. It's a real so song. So this week, it's a this real week, song. if we were not in a pandemic, exactly. this June, what would, would you be, you doing? be doing? Where would you be? Yes. What, what would you be doing? Um... Preparing for Children and Youth Month. True, true. Because you are <laughs> exactly. like, that, exactly. like everything stands or fall in ministry with you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I would be doing. I, I think I had some like trip plan or something like that. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. Uh, let us know. What would you be doing if we were not in the pandemic this month? Exactly. Also, if you are worshiping with us for the first time, we're excited that you're here. Just let us know that you're a first time worship by putting that one emoji in the live chat yes. so that we can greet you with the love and hugs of Jesus Christ. But we are a welcoming congregation and we want you to feel the love. Yes. So we are in a new sermon series. Yeah. Uh, this sermon series is Unsung, Living a Faithful but Uncelebrated Life yes. to God. And we're going to be diving deeply into the life of Samuel. Yep. Uh, we're going to just like really look at, you know, how to live this faithful life in this time, often time of confusion, this time yeah. of compromise, this time yeah. of, you know, where we it's in this country really yeah. need some serious leadership from everybody. Exactly. Uh, we need this time of uh, uh, unsung and faithful yeah. living. So we have this new sermon series. I know you're ready. So, so we're excited. Let's we get are. started. So Trey, take us away. Amen. Tab I fam, I hope you came to worship this first Sunday. Come on, let's give God some glory. Come on. Let me hear you say yeah. Sing of your marvelous words, yeah. Every knee, every knee shall bow before you, and every tongue shall that you are Lord. Yes, you are. Of your marvelous words, every knee, and every tongue shall that you are Lord. Yes, you are. With every song that I sing, every song that I sing I'm gonna praise, I'm gonna praise. Hey, You are my God and my King, my God and my King. That's the one greater hey, For you are Lord oh, hey. oh, Say Glory, hey, 
with every song that I sing, song that I sing. Lord, I'm going to praise If you know that he's worthy, give him all the honor, give him all the praise. We worship you, our glory joy. You are the Lord, the Lord of all. We worship you, our glory joy. You are the Lord, the Lord. Our glory is yours. You are the Lord, the Lord of all. We worship you. Our glory is yours. You are the Lord, the Lord of all. 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 Come on and give him honor right where you are. Somebody open up your mouth and just say something sweet to him. Hallelujah. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands and told adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything love me in your arms Just want 
to tell Lord I love you more than anything cause I love you Jesus I love you Jesus and I worship and Tell you, Lord, Lord, I love you more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And I worship you. I just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more. Yeah, yeah. I love you, Jesus. And I worship it. And I just came to tell you, Lord. Lord. Cause I love you, Jesus. And I'll give you all the honor. Just want to tell you, Lord. Lord, I love you more. More. There's nobody like you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. And I worship it. I just want to tell you, Lord. Lord, I love you more. There's nobody like you, Lord. Because I love Jesus. And I worship and adore you. Just want. Lord, I love you more. Oh, I praise you, Jesus. And I worship and adore you. Just one Lord. Lord, I love you more. gathering today we love you more than anything hope that's your testimony as well it's prayer time family and as you gather your friends and loved ones around your television set your computer whatever device you're utilizing we're praying that if you have any necessary prayer requests that you want this ministry to partner with you in the information is on the screen we'd be grateful if you would email us so we can partner with you let's pray god we love you more than anything you are our God, and we are the sheep of your pasture, God. We love you, God, because you are a good shepherd, and you look after us. Thank you, God, for always turning your eye toward us, that if your eye is on the sparrow, God, your eye is certainly on us. Thank you, God, for your majesty. We thank you, God, for your glory. We thank you, God, for the honor that you walk in, God. We thank you, God, that your presence is known in this earth and we as your children and believers God we're trusting you for our lives today because you are our good shepherd now God as we prepare to worship you in spirit and in truth we pray God that you would receive our worship today our music the word of God that is going forth from the man of God we pray your choice blessings over our lives that your people might be built up edified and strengthened in the word of God today many God who having to watch their televisions are who are observing protests and riots across this country, God, can come across being disturbed, God. But we pray your peace today, not just over our land, God, but in our mind and in our hearts. 
releasing trouble, God, from our spirit, distress from our spirit, God. We're praying life and liberty, God. We're praying the freedom that rises up in you. We're thanking you, God, because not only are we celebrating you today, God, but we're celebrating your life, your death, and your resurrection. That God, your believers, people of faith, are walking in the power of that resurrection. Though destruction may seem to be all around our nation right now, we're trusting in a resurrected Christ being released from the claws of death. And we have a right to live, God, and to be alive in you. And whether we live or die, God, it's all in you. So we're trusting you today, God, for all things for our lives. So again, God, receive our worship. So we bless you and we give you honor because all the glory belongs to you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Would that you prepare your hearts to receive a warm welcome from our congregation and from our senior pastor. Welcome, Tab iFam, and thank you for worshiping with us through Tab Global, which is our website, Tab Impact app, Facebook, and YouTube. We thank you for showing up, for sharing, supporting, and engaging. Now remember to share the link and invite your family and friends to join you too. The good news is too good not to be shared. As you normally would do, feel free to get out of your seat and sing along with our praise team. And shout and type your amens in the comments as you're blessed by the Word of God. So, on behalf of PG, that's what our family calls pastor, and the entire Tabernacle Baptist Church family, we welcome you and thank you for being a part of our Tab I Band. Come on, let's worship. What's up, Tab? I fam, so good to see you today. Uh, we are just blessed by your presence in this place. Once again, uh, we are in the month of June, and we are in the summertime. And even though we're in the midst of a global pandemic, we're still honoring God as we're progressing through this crazy, uncertain. But I still believe... God is going to get glory out of this year. Listen, once again, if you are here for the first time, we want you to make sure you put that one up in our comment section. One of our Tab I team is ready to engage with you. Matter of fact, we got some folk already online. Come on, Tab. I want you to start greeting one another. Give each one a virtual hug and high five as we once again are grateful for an opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth. Today is also First Sunday, so go ahead and prepare yourself for whatever sacraments you want to share at the conclusion of our sermon today. We're going to move right into our Lord's Supper. And so whatever you have, get it ready. Your crackers, your bread, your, your juice, your water, whatever it is, as we prepare our hearts to honor God through the gift that God has graced us with in Him on this day. Matter of fact, we've got some wonderful things we want to share with you. So make sure that you tune in. There's some great things happening here at Tabernacle Baptist Church, the most impactful place on the planet. Introducing Tab Global. Worship with us whenever and wherever through our website, Facebook, YouTube, and our Tab Impact app. Tab family, it's good to see you again. Well, virtually at least. I was just running through the newly launched tab pages on the Tabernacle website. Tab pages are basically a way for our members to connect with local business owners here within our tab family. Now on this website, there are several industries that are represented. Industries such as automotive, beauty and wellness, and catering. Now, if you're looking for someone to help you with Christian matchmaking or dating services, mm, we can't help you find your summer boo. However, if you are looking for someone to help you find your next new home, there's a page for that. If you're looking to make sure you have the appropriate amount of insurance, there's a page for that. If you're looking to make sure that you have the appropriate beauty products, there's a page for that. If you're looking for someone to help you get your fitness program in order, there's a page for that too. I think you get the picture. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, so many business owners are anxious to reopen their doors and serve the community. 
Here at Tabernacle Baptist Church, we believe in supporting local. We believe in supporting our community. We believe in supporting our family. Tab Pages is just one of the ways we can walk out our faith and demonstrate that commitment to our community. And it's just one of the reasons why we're the most impactful place on the planet, the historic Tabernacle Baptist Church. Wow, once again, we're so grateful to be able to partner with so many different individuals uh, within our community. Once again, we want you to go to the website, check out our tab pages. It's been in the grow for the last couple of years, and we want to support our very own. We're so proud of our families, and we're also excited on next Sunday, we will be announcing those who awarded the Hope Seed offering. So be tuned, share with us on next week. That's very important as well. Also, the month of June is what we call our children and youth month. And even though we're in the midst of a global pandemic and in the midst of social unrest, we still want to provide this opportunity for our young people. So we need you to go online. Pretty Girls Rock is for our young ladies and Barbershop is for our young men. We're going to do an online version Wednesday, June 17th. You can go online and register for that. But also, we are doing a virtual vacation Bible school. That's right. Go only three days this year, June 23rd through Thursday, June 25th. It's going to be a great time for us to come together fellowship. We always look forward to those pivotal moments within our church family that we get to share. And unfortunately, we can't go to Carowinds this year, but we can still gather together virtually for Vacation Bible School. Listen, a lot of things else are happening as well. On last week is the a video of encouragement as we are we have a task force going forward to talk about re-entry. We have no timeline and really don't have a deadline. We're allowing the virus to dictate to us, but we need your input. So there is a survey returning to TBC Augusta re-entry survey, and we need you to go ahead and click on that. Give us some of your feedback. Allow us to just hear from you, those who are interested in in-person gathering as we get ready to move into re-entry, but also re-merging. Once again, there's no timetable. We don't have any deadline. We're just wanting to get as much information as possible so that we can make the best decision that we can. Listen, we're in the midst not only of a global pandemic, but also we're in the midst of what I believe is a revolution. We're seeing a moment move to a movement. Once again, we lift up those families who've lost uh, loved ones to police brutality. But man, I have been encouraged by what we've been seeing as many people have been standing up and protesting, even within here in Augusta, Georgia and everything else, we stand with the salute and the slogan, Black Lives Matter. We believe in that. And it has been amazing to see this mantra be able to not only be articulated here in the United States, but also across the world. We stand in solidarity. And we thank God for so many uh, who are here. My prayer is that the momentum does not stop. We keep pushing and progressing. But just like I told you on last week, let's not just protest with our feet. Let's also protest with our vote. This is a critical year, not just from a federal standpoint, but also from a state and local standpoint. So this is what I want you to do. Early voting has ended on last Friday. But here locally in Georgia, primaries are this Tuesday. Make sure you go out and do that. And if you're watching us from from all over the globe, which many of you are, make sure that you know the dates that you can vote. This is just a primary. We got a couple more dates this year, and we as a church is going to keep telling you when we can exercise that. And one of the great things I heard at the protest last night is there was a voter registration, and we're going to have that pushing very hard as we come to conclusion of the summer. We want everyone to know that your voice is your vote. So make sure that you do that as well. Listen, we're preparing our hearts to give. God has truly been good to us. And in this moment, we want to show God that he has been faithful to us and we want to be faithful to God. So Lord, I'm just praying now in this time that we will once again get ourselves together as we once again ask God to bless us in a powerful way. So let's go ahead and prepare our hearts to give. You'll see there's a multitude of ways to give through Givelify and Secure Give. Uh, there's even cash app and other things that can help us to be able to do it. So listen, we want you to know that we are here to work together and we're grateful for the partnership that we can provide for the kingdom of God. Let's pray right now. God, we bless you. We honor you. And we ask in this time, God, that you would once again allow us 
or to continue to be faithful contributors, to be good stewards over what you have blessed us with. And now, God, we come to the moment where we get to show in a tangible way how we love and appreciate what you have done for us. So I thank you for those who are giving online, even at this moment. We appreciate their faithfulness and trust in the work that is going on here at Tabernacle. And even those who are mailing their gift in or dropping their gift off, so many are staying faithful during this time. And we want them to know that we are grateful for their ability to help us continue to make an impact. So God bless us. And we pray now that a harvest would return so that we can do even greater work for you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts as we now receive our worship and arts ministry now as we once again give to the glory of God.
been said that those who make the greatest impact are not always those who are the most gifted, nor are they even the most talented. They're not even the most influential. What makes their impact great is that they remain faithful. Not everyone will celebrate them or even speak highly of them, but they know that they must make the courageous decision to live for God even when they aren't noticed. They are found in unexpected places, making a difference in unexpected ways. Because in the end, that's what truly matters. That's what people will remember. In a time where there is so much pressure to perform, we need those who will choose faithfulness over fame. These are our unsung heroes. We are excited today as we're beginning a brand new sermon series entitled Unsung. Uh, as we look at the faithful but uncelebrated life of a man by the name of Samuel. As we prepare our hearts to get into the word of God, I invite you to pray with me and for me at this moment. God, we come to this precious time. We're asking that we will once again be and engaged and impacted in a very powerful way through your word. God, we understand there's so much going on in the world. We need your word. We need to hear from you. And we ask that you would once again speak to our hearts, challenge us. We pray, God, that you would push us, progress us. Ultimately, God, we want to live a life that is faithful unto you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. As once again, this is a series entitled Unsung, and we're going to be looking at Samuel, a man of God who, once again, this book is named after, but if the truth be told, even though the book is named after him, most oftentimes when we look at First and Second Samuel, we think more of Saul and more of David, but Samuel is very important to the narrative of the Bible as he once again ties us between the judge period and the monarch period. I'm going to invite your attention to 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, this will be about a two-month series. About eight weeks we'll be sharing uh, about the life of Samuel. I invite you to, as I do in every moment, to make sure that you keep some good notes. We're going to really dive deep and dig deep and to see uh, what we can glean from uh, the life of Samuel that's going to be helpful and beneficial to us in times like this. I'm reading from the Good News Translation. And this is what the Word of God says, 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning around verse 19. This is the Word of God for us on this day. The next morning, Elkanai and his family got up early, and after worshiping the Lord, they went back home to Ramah. Elkanai had intercourse with his wife Hannah, and the Lord answered her prayer. So it was that she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel and explained, I asked the Lord for him time came again for Elkanah and his family to go to Shiloh and other and offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and a special sacrifice he had promised. But this time Hannah did not go. She told her husband, as soon as a child is winged, I will take him to the house of the Lord where he will stay all his life. Elkanah answered, all right, do whatever you think best. Stay at home until you have winged him. And may the Lord make your promise come true. So Hannah stayed at home and nursed her child. After she had winged him, she took him to Shiloh, taking along a three-year-old bull, a bushel of flour, and leather bag full of wine. She took Samuel, young as he was, to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And after they had killed the bull, they took the child to Eli. Hannah said to him, excuse me, sir, do you remember me? I am the woman you saw standing here praying to the Lord. I asked him for this child, and he gave me what I asked for. So I am dedicating him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he will belong to the Lord. Then they worshiped the Lord there. Once again, look at verse 27. I asked him for this child, and he gave me what I asked for. So I am dedicating him to the Lord. And as long as he lives... He will belong to the Lord. As we once again are engaging this unsung sermon series, I want to start this first sermon off with this tag entitled, The Responsibility of an Answered Prayer. Lift those hands wherever you are and say, Lord, speak. We need to hear. The story of Samuel is intriguing as we begin to dive into his life. 
as we once again begin to see his significance in the canon and the story of the people of Israel. He is considered the last and the most prominent and powerful judge. He's in the lineage of Samson and Deborah and others of the judges that God raised up in order to lead Israel through a period of time when they were struggling to remain faithful to God. But Samuel not only is the last judge, but Samuel also is a man that God trusts that when it comes time for the children of Israel to want a king, God chooses Samuel to anoint the first king of Israel. His name is Saul. But after a while, you know the story of Saul. Saul falls out of favor with God. And guess what then happens? God commissions Samuel to anoint David to be the next king. That is literally the, the highs and lows of what we see in the life of Samuel. He's the last and most powerful judge. He is the one that's dedicated to God. He's the one that has anointed Saul and David to the kingship over Israel. But I want to submit for you today that before we can dig really into the life of Samuel, we must understand how did we get Samuel. And we got Samuel based upon the story that is found here in 1 Samuel chapter 1 that gives us the story of Samuel's mother, a woman by the name of Hannah. Hannah in our text is barren, but even in her barrenness, she prays to God and she prays to God that God would open her wound and grant her a child. And when she prayed this prayer to God, there was one caveat, one condition. She said, God, if you would grant me this child, I will give this child back to you. I think there's something powerful in that. And therein lies the tension as we begin this journey, this sojourn, if you will. That what we begin to see is that oftentimes we are wrestling with the tension of trying to figure out, God, uh, if you bless me with this, the question is, will you give it back to God? As good as God has been to us, the real reality is that God give it to you for you to keep it to yourself. But did God grace it to you so that you can give it back to God? One of the things that I've noticed over this global pandemic, I find myself uh, watching TV at a level that I would not normally do. And there's a show on Netflix called Hoarders. Hoarders is a show that begins to chronicle the life of individuals uh, who have a hard time of letting stuff go. If you ever seen the show Hoarders, it seems as if those homes are about to be condemned. You see people walking over trash all because they have some stuff they can't let go. And I know it's easy to let go of bad stuff. It's easy to let go of stuff that's hard and hurtful. But the true question today is how do you release what's good? How do you release what's glorious? How do you release what God has blessed you with? Can you be responsible over an answered prayer? And that's what we begin to unpack in this passage. That's, that's why the story of Hannah and in her barrenness, she still trusted God. I mean, you see the tension that navigates in her life as she's having to wrestle with a woman by the name of Penina who is not only the other apple in the eye of her husband Elkanai but she Penina is reproductive she is producing when Hannah cannot but what I appreciate about the story of Hannah is that even though Hannah is barren she does not give up in her confidence and trust in God and she finds herself in the temple she prays so that even the priest a man by the name of Eli a Assumes that she is drunk, but she says, I'm not drunk. I just have a petition. I have a supplication. I have a desire that I need from God. And when she leaves the temple, the Bible says, Eli says, God has heard your prayer. And that's by the time we get to the end of 1 Samuel chapter 1, she gives birth to a boy named Samuel. Samuel is the one that is the last judge. Samuel, the one that is the one that coronates Saul and David. But Samuel, in essence, is the answered prayer of Hannah, that her wound is open. But here is what I love about this passage, is that it teaches us how Hannah deals with Samuel, is how you and I have to deal with our answered prayers. When God answers our prayer. Can we be like Hannah and give our Samuels back? That's crucial for us to really think through. That's 
what I really want to spend a few moments trying to think about. I, I wonder if you ever had a prayer answered by God. Have you prayed for some stuff and God gave it to you? Can I ask you a question? Were you like those folk on the show hoarders? Did you try to keep it to yourself? Or were you like Hannah and said, God, if you gave it to me, I'm going to give it right back to you. This is a moment of reflection. How then can we handle our answered prayers? That's what I want to unpack real quickly today. I want to be in this series, if y'all will allow me, to be as practical and as simple with my principles as possible. My aim as we go through the life of Samuel and those things that surround his life, I want to make this as best an applicable kind of sermon series because I believe in this day and age, we need to make the Bible speak. We need to have stories that push us and help us to understand exactly what what we are trying to get in our walk with God. And my aim in this sermon today is to challenge your commitment. My aim today is to really see, do you really believe God is who you say God is? Are you really in the place where you can say, God, if you bless me, I can give it back to you, God. If you grace me with the job, I can give it back to you, God. If you grace me with the family, I can give it back to you, God. If you grace me with the provision, I can give it back to you. I want wonder if we be honest, how responsible have we been? Have we been responsible over the things God has blessed us with? Have we been responsible over the lives God has called us to lead? Have we been responsible over the ministries that God has entrusted to us? What I'm here to push us today is that really the question that is on this packed text today is what are you doing with the Samuel God has blessed you with? When you think about that, that's heavy for us. Hannah shows us how we're supposed to navigate and manage our Samuels. Let me give you a couple of principles. Let me share them with you. Because I believe that Hannah gives us a perfect prototype of how we should be responsible with our Samuels. And when God answers our prayer, the least we can do is give God back what God has blessed us with. The first thing that I think we can glean from this passage as we once again navigate this relationship between Hannah, Samuel, and God, is that what we learn in this narrative? Is that number one, if we're going to be responsible over our Samuels, we must first of all apply action to what we ask for. That what I'm submitting here in this passage of scripture is that you just can't pray about it. You must do something about it as well. That, that's what makes the passage so powerful. As we pick up in the narrative, you remember I told you that Hannah was barren. She was embarrassed because of her, of her barrenness. And she felt less than because in those days to be barren, not to have children, was to be looked down upon. And as much as Elkanah, her husband, tried to make her feel comfortable, she knew that I had to produce. And that was the culture of that day. To have children meant you had value. That was what they had in that time of Hannah, Elkanah, and Paniah. And so when she goes to the temple in Shiloh, she prays. Eli sees her, accuses her of being drunk. She retorts back to him, I'm not drunk, I'm just praying. I have something I need from God. And Eli sees the sincerity of her prayer. And as she's leaving the temple, he tells her, and God has heard your prayer. This is where the passage begins to shift. Because I will submit to you that I appreciate what Hannah does in our text. The Bible says that once she gets the assurance that God has heard her prayer, that God can open her womb. The Bible says something that when she goes home, she makes a decision. She lays with her husband Elkanah. Since this is a PG rated tab global experience, I'm going to let you infer all you want to infer from what the text says, the text says they laid together. They were married, husband and wife, and they laid together. And in the midst of them laying together, the Bible says something intriguing, and the Lord remembered her. Uh, what I appreciate about this action, no matter how you want to categorize it, is that there we see Hannah, who has a promise from God. God has heard her prayer. But she realizes in order for the promise to come to pass, in order for a child to be conceived, I just can't pray about it. 
I got to do something about it as well. In this passage, what we see is that she partners with God in bringing about what she prayed for. And I want to submit for you today, my brothers and sisters, that if we're going to produce the Samuel that we've been asking God for, we have got to make sure that we do our part. I know that oftentimes we pray about it and say, God, it's up to you. But what if I told you that God gives us the gracious opportunity to partner with him in producing the promise God allows you and I to apply action to what we ask for is exactly what John Calvin that great theologian suggested when he talked about this whole notion between divine sovereignty and human responsibility and in that in that thought what he says is that God allows us the privilege to partner in purpose he raises up a scriptural antidote where he says it's like when Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus. He called Lazarus to come out, but in order for Lazarus to be free and unbound, some people had to roll away the stone and they had to take off his grave clothes. What I'm submitting for you today is that when it comes from what we ask for, we have to put action on our ass. What I'm saying is don't just pray about the job, fill out an application. Uh, don't just pray about the relationship, go get some counseling. Don't just pray that there's a change in our nation, but decide in yourself that I'm going to do everything that I can when we put action on what we ask for is when we can have our prayers answered because that's what happens in essence my brothers and sisters she gives birth his name is Samuel which means this is what I ask the Lord for I love that because at the end of the day she knew that whatever this produced from this is because it was God that gave it to me the year was 1955 in this town of Alabama called Montgomery, a woman by the name of Rosa Parks had just been arrested on a bus because she had, had refused to give up her seat. This was an important moment. It was a seminal moment, if you will, in the civil rights movement because for the next 13 months, they made a decision that they were going to boycott the bus system of Montgomery. That, that is what happened there for those 13 months. These African-American brave brothers and sisters decided that in order for action to take place, for our freedom to happen, we would have to do something ourselves. That's why I get encouraged when I'm seeing the peaceful protests. That's why I get encouraged when I see people who are now taking seriously the mantra, Black Lives Matter. That's why I'm encouraged when I see all that I'm seeing. Why? Because it's one thing to ask for something, but it's another thing to put action to what we ask for. In our text, what we see is that Hannah shows us uh, you got to put some action on what you pray for. She applies action in our text to what she asked for. But then also number two, we also know that we learn in this passage that when we are given a Samuel, that number two, we also learn don't be rushed to expose our gift. Now, now here's what's interesting. If you read this passage, between verses 21 and 23, it's intriguing to note what has taken place. The scene shifts. Samuel is born. And now it has come on the calendar for the family led by Elkanah to go to the temple in Shiloh to offer sacrifices. These are mandates, part of their religious obligations. That every year the husband and the children and the wives would go to the temple to offer sacrifices and you can imagine that perhaps they were thinking to themselves here is Hannah who was barren and now has a child and you can imagine that people in the family were probably saying she'll be happy to go to the temple and show off to everybody the Samuel that was produced but the text says something intriguing that when Elkanah came to her and said Hannah are you ready to go Hannah says to Elkanah I'm not going with you this year I need to spend some time weaning the child. This is intriguing to me because what she's literally saying is I need to let the child mature first before I bring it out in public. I need this child to be big enough to handle life on its own before I show everybody what God has done. 
Now, I would admit to you that as I read this passage of Scripture, Hannah shows to me immense maturity. Because if it had been you and I in the text, and we had endured what Hannah had endured, if we'd been barren for as long as Hannah had, and if we were having the competition with Penina that we had, and now all of a sudden we have now given birth, we would have been quick to show everybody exactly what God has done. We would not have waited. We would have rushed and said, oh, look at my baby. Look at what God helped me do. We would have been quick to make it all about that moment. But Hannah shows restraint, and she teaches us that sometimes you should not be in a hurry to expose what God has blessed you with. Oh, I think I'm going to hurt some people's feelings now because we're so quick, especially in this social media era, that we want to show everybody. We, we are living lives where as soon as something happens, uh, we got to post it and plaster it for the world to see. But what Hannah teaches us in the text is sometimes you need to spend some moments weaning your Samuel. In other words, you ought to be maturing your gift before you expose it to the world. Uh, that you ought to make sure that you're doing what you can uh, to make sure that your gift is ready. So when the world sees it, uh, that there is no doubt uh, that it can stand the scrutiny uh, of public exposure. Can we be honest and be real truthful and transparent? Sometimes you and I can unfortunately make the mistake of doing things prematurely. We can show people before it's ready to be shown and when people don't understand it and we don't understand it ourselves it opens us up to it to be shot down to have our feelings hurt but may I submit to you that we ought to do what Hannah does and just wean your Samuel take time developing your Samuel take time making sure that your Samuel is getting matured because when the time comes your Samuel has to be ready I don't know how many times I've seen people with their Samuel, with their gift, with their promise, lose it because they rushed its exposure. And I know you got a call from God, but that don't mean you got to use it right now. I know people say you're gifted, but that don't mean it needs to be exposed right now. Be like Hannah in the text. Learn how to wean your Samuel. And while I'm on this weaning, can I be honest with you? I just another character that I, I want to tip my cap to, her husband Elkanah. Because the text suggests to us that Elkanah didn't force her to do something she wasn't ready to do. And I'm grateful because I think Elkanah is a prototype of people you need in your life. You need people who can support you in your weaning season. You need people who can support you while you're trying to mature and progress the promise, you need people who are supportive but not trying to push you. You need people who are praying for you but understand it's a process. You need some Elkanahs while you're trying to wean your Samuel. Can I help you today? Don't rush it. Don't be so forced because of pressure or because you want to let everybody know what God has done. No. The time will come when everybody will know what was produced. And if we're not careful, we can sometimes, in a premature way, expose our Samuels before it's time. That's what our text seems to tell us. Is you got to apply action to what you ask for. Don't rush the process or expose what you got. Then there's third principle, and I'm going to take my seat. Third thing I see in this text, if we're going to be responsible over our Samuels, is we must honor our vow to God with our best. I love this. Three years have passed. The text tells us between verse 24 and 28. Three, thing, three years have passed. Now the moment has come where Hannah feels comfortable taking Samuel to the temple in Shiloh. But what I appreciate about this is that even though she's been with the child three years and many mothers could tell you that there's a connectivity that takes place. That many people would not fault Hannah if Hannah, after these three years, was saying, God, I know I made a promise to you, but you, I've gone close to my child. 
And I know I promise you I give it back to you and I'll let them serve you. But God, these three years, we've gotten close. But what I appreciate about Hannah in our text is that she does not renege on her vow to God. She is going to follow through on the promise she made to God. When she prayed, she said, God, if you give me a child, I'll give that child back to you. When she prayed, she said, God, if you would open my womb. I'll dedicate this child to lifetime service for you. And now the time has come. And now she must make good on her promise. And the text says without hesitation, without reservation, she packs up Samuel and she takes a sacrifice to the temple. She takes a three-year-old bull or maybe some transition say three bulls to the temple. She takes flour and different things because according to Leviticus is when God honors a vow, you owe him a sacrifice. When God does what you've asked him to do, the least you can do is give him a sacrifice. But when you study this particular sacrifice of a three-year-old bull or three bulls and flour and other things, you'll note that she didn't bring a regular offering to the temple, but she brought above and beyond sacrifice to the temple then not only was she going to give Samuel to God but she was going to make it a greater sacrifice to show her appreciation to what she thought God was in her life can I tell you I appreciate what Hannah teaches us in this text that she teaches us is that when you honor your vow to God you don't just give him your leftovers and scraps but we ought to give God our absolute best she said not only God am I giving you Samuel you, but I'm going to give you a sacrifice that is worthy of who you are. This is not a moment to be angry or to be upset, but this is a moment to honor and trust God because if God gave me a Samuel, it means God is a keeper of his word. And I wish I had time to get up in where you are because I would tell you because when she gave that Samuel to God, if you keep reading in chapter 2, the Bible says that God continued uh, to open her wound. Uh, in other words, when she offered to God uh, her first fruits, when she tithed her first child to God, uh, God said, since I can trust you with a Samuel, uh, I can trust you with many more. And I don't wonder how many of us are missing out on our blessings from God uh, because when the time comes, we keep reneging uh, on what we promised God we were going to do. Uh, there you were praying, God, uh, if you give me the job, I'll be more faithful in my service and God gave you the job but yet you still give him the same laissez-faire nonchalant effort when it comes to serving in the kingdom of God there you go saying God if you would restore my relationship I promise you that I'll be a better witness for the kingdom and God restored it God granted you grace God mended fences put forgiveness in your heart and now you're still tripping because you haven't done your part but one thing I want you to know is that when it comes time for us to honor God with what God has blessed us with you don't give God a little but you give God your best that's what she does she gives God a best she takes that child to Eli said Eli you remember me I'm the one that you thought was drunk praying but I want you to know God answered my prayer that's this son Samuel and I'm giving it to him, and he will serve you for a lifetime. And the end of verse 28 blesses me, and I'm done. The text says, and they left worshiping the Lord. I love that. That in this moment, it was not a time of sadness, but it was a time of celebration. That when she offered it back to God, she didn't offer it in a way that was weak, but she made it a moment of worship. She worship God I'll be honest there's many in the text there are many scholars who suggest who were the ones worshiping some have said it's Hannah but if you read this passage closely unpack it in the original Hebrew it is in a masculine form so could it be that either it was Elkanah who worshiped it could have been Eli who worshiped or it could have even been Samuel at three years old who worshiped there is no conclusive evidence either way. We don't know for certain who worship. But what we do know is some worship went on. <laughs> Can I help you? 
Because I want you to know, regardless of who worship, I like to believe all of them worship. Because they saw that as a God moment where God answered their prayer. And not only was it an answered prayer, but it was also a promise kept by Hannah. Because whenever you keep your promises to God, God would always keep his promises to you. I'm done. May the Lord bless you real good. But I remember when this coronavirus epidemic was starting, people were losing their mind. Matter of fact, my financial advisor called me, said, Dr. Goodman, how you doing? I said, I'm all right, but I need to know what is happening. I see the market is crashing. I, I see so much is going on. Many people are saying that we're in an economic strike. And I need to know, and I told my financial advisor, do I need to take out my money? What, what do I need to do? Do like the old school people, put my money in my mattress. But my financial advisor asked me a critical question. He said, Dr. Goodman, you are right. Every report you're reading is true. The market is crashing. It's going to historic lows. But I need to ask you a question, Pastor Goodman. Are you in this short term or long term? I thought it was an interesting question. I said, sir, why, why are you asking me if it's short term, long term? You're telling me the market's bad. You're telling me it's crashing. It's going to historical lows. He said, because how you answer that determines what you do with what you have. If you are in the short term, take it out. Because if you take it out, if you're only in the short term, then you are losing money now. But if you're in this for the long term, you can handle the highs and lows. Because at the end of the day, no matter how bad things are now, if your investment is long term, you will always come out top at the end. That's the thing I want to leave you with today because that's what Hannah did in our text is that she was not investing Samuel in the short term. She was not investing Samuel for the highs and lows but she was making a long term investment and when you make a long term investment in God I don't care how crazy the world gets. I don't care how wild things may be. Just like my financial advisor told me you're going to be good at the end. And whenever God graces you with a Samuel, don't make it a short-term investment, but you make it a long-term investment because that's how you manage an answered prayer. That's our word. As we're in this place at this moment, as our musicians play softly, here we see this great man, last of the judges, the one that coronated and anointed Saul and David. He started out as an answered prayer. He came from the wound of a barren woman who had the audacity to pray to God for something. And God heard her prayer and answered her prayer. And she wasn't selfish with what was produced. Many of us would never know Samuel if Hannah would have kept him to herself. And at the end of the day, that's the power of the gifts God gives us. That if you want to be great, you must learn how to handle God's blessings with open hands. I wonder how many of us have bartered with God only to renege on our promise. God, if you do this, I'm going to do this. And God did it, and now he's still waiting on you to do what you said you were going to do. When God graced her with Samuel, she didn't hesitate. She winged him for a season. But when the time had come, she brought him to God. Th that's what I've learned even in my own personal life. As God has graced me with so many wonderful opportunities. And I tell people quickly, it's not because I'm the most gifted. But I learned early on that my gift is not my own. That whatever God has graced me with, it belongs to him. When you and I endeavor to give it back to God, what if I told you it'll always be greater in God's hands 
than in you and I hands. That's why at the end of the day, whatever you pray for, follow through on your prayer. Learn how to trust God in the process. And when God brings it to pass, do what you said you was going to do. As we hear in this moment, I want to invite someone who after hearing the word of God to, to make a decision. This is a great time for you and I to connect together and partner. We at our church would absolutely love to have the opportunity to journey along together with you. There's multiple ways to do that. Text join, you can email, you can even visit uh, our website. Matter of fact, we already have online now, not just with our tab IT, but if you're saying, listen, I need special prayer, we have a special room we're going to send you to. A link is coming your way. If you just lift that up in the comment section, there are people who are now live ready to pray with you, ready to engage with you, to help you in this journey. But we're not also interested in partnership, but we also are interested in relationship. And maybe there's some of you out there that have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's a simple process. They call it the ABCs, accept, believe, and confess. And that's where you are, and you're saying, PG, I've never done that. I've never committed myself to God through his son, Jesus Christ. And I want you to repeat after me just these simple phrases. I accept Jesus. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that he is Lord. If you said those things with me, here's the good news. You are saved. Now listen, here's the truth. Salvation is free, but discipleship costs. And what we really want to challenge you to do it's to honor the commitment you've made. Be like Hannah in our text. God, if you save me, I'll follow you. Well, follow. If you save me, I'll go all out for you. Well, go all out for God. At the end of the day, that's the power that is produced because God is an answerer of prayer. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, if you join, I want you to lift your hands and. In the comment section, let us know that you connected with us. And I want to pray with you. God, we thank you again for the precious opportunity and privilege to be able to be in partnership with the church and in relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I pray that we be responsible stewards over the answered prayers that you give us. Realizing that our Samuels don't belong to us, they belong to you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. At this moment, as our worship and arts ministry prepares our hearts, we're going to transition to the Lord's Supper experience at this time.
as you have gathered your sacraments and your elements that will participate with us together let us pray God we come at this moment we honor you Lord we pray now that you would touch our hearts if there's any amnesty any ought that we have against one another we pray now for reconciliation we know now that our world is hurting on a lot of different areas from the coronavirus to the virus of racism and God we need you we need your strength and we need your power and your unity what an awesome opportunity for us, even in the midst of this, to celebrate the gifts that you gave to us that bridge the gap, your body and your blood. So now bless it as we partake together in the bread and in the wine. Whatever the elements that those who are sharing in this moment have, we bless it now. Bless it as a constant reminder of your body and of your blood. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. It was a night that we call Monday Thursday. And Jesus had congregated his disciples in the upper room. I think it's interesting that as we in the world are in the midst of protests, that when I think about communion in my perspective, it was a protest as well. As we see Jesus preparing to give himself up for others, the protest he was fighting was the power of sin that was in our lives. He decided to do something about it. He gave of himself, which in essence is the power of protest. But he didn't give his life because they wanted to take it, but he gave it freely. And that's the power of this moment, is when we think about what Jesus has done for us, we think of the gift of his life, his body, and his blood. And as we partake in this moment, I want you to grab your gifts with us. He took the bread with his disciples and said, this is my body given to you. Let us eat together. Like man, he took the wine and said, this is my blood. Blood shed on you and shed for you. Let us drink whatever you have together. power this moment they sang a protest song and went into the garden of Gethsemane there he prayed the next thing you know we see a state sanctioned death but here's the power Friday was not the end but Sunday's coming because resurrection always comes after crucifixion that's the power of this moment that's the power of the life that we live. And no matter how much we get crushed, through our faith and power in Jesus, we shall rise again. God, we thank you. We bless you. Let us continue to protest injustice. Let us continue to protest inequality. Let us continue to honor the sacrifice you've made for us cover us with your blood. Thank you for the gift of your body. God, as we prepare to conclude in this moment, we conclude to be better. The benediction is not an end, but it's a greater call to more. Let us stand together, realizing that you was on that cross, heaving and couldn't breathe, but you stayed the course so that we could have eternal life. We thank you for that. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. As we depart from one another, lift those hands, repeat after me and say, because I've been blessed, I'm going to be a blessing. I love you. Go in peace and may the God of peace go with you as well. Yo, what's up, Tap I fam? It's so glad to have you join us for another Tap Global Experience. You know, here at Tab, we exist to be a welcoming, a witnessing, and, and a worshiping. worshiping community. You know, we just finished our first sermon series, our first sermon in our new sermon series, yes. Unsung. And you know, we need those examples of faithful lives, yes. even when they're not celebrating. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this year, you might have been that person. Yeah. that you know you've put in the work you're grinding real hard you might be you know in politics you might be in medical field yeah. you might be a student a writer a creative influence whatever 
and you're putting in the work and you're just not celebrated. Yeah, we hope so. that this sermon was helpful for you in helping you live a faithful life to God. Also, we're excited and hope that you were blessed by our communion um, time together. If you did communion with your family, please take a picture and post it so we um, can see that we're making an impact with communion through God and worship. Amen. Also, be mindful, June is our Children and Youth Month, and so we do have a lot of great things coming your way. Pretty Girl Rock Bible yes. Shop, as yes. well as Vacation Bible School. So please make sure that you go online and make sure you register for those events so you can be a part. Yes, so we hope that you enjoyed worship yes. today. Uh, if it's beautiful, go out yeah. enjoy this day. We got some good weather going on. Make sure you do something to take care of your mind, your heart, your spirit right now. That's yes. crazy, but make sure you take care of yourself. Self-care yes. is a spiritual discipline. It is. Uh, so <laughs> we hope that y'all have a wonderful week. Be blessed. We love you. Take care. Bye-bye. We had a cute baby moment. Exactly, that was adorable. I'm ready to go home, man, and hug my son now. Exactly, okay. All right, bye.